So financial literacy, um, we you know that's a big topic. How I mean, your kids are real small; they're seven and three years old. But I have personally seen you kind of imparting a little bit of you know financial literacy to your son, who is seven years old. Um, is that something? You know, the three year olds I wouldn't think is there yet, but. Um, yeah, is that something do you do now, even at seven years old? Do you try to impart a little bit about kind of the realities of life, um, how much things cost, stuff like that? Because I've seen that with you in terms of even when they're playing with toys and they could just, you know, throw away a toy, but, you know, the value, the money that's gone behind, the energy that's gone behind that toy to even get that toy to them um, and, and wanting them to appreciate that. <laughs> the answer to the question. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> no, perfect. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think financial literacy is is really important. Uh, I do struggle sometimes with how much focus uh, to put on it or not put on it, um, because the more focus you put on it, the more you perpetuate the idea that commercialism and money are the key uh, aspects of life. Uh, and personally, I, I don't want that to be the key value of life, but uh, you know, it is the reality. The way I do it uh, with my seven-year-old is I don't expect him to internalize the messaging you know in one time but to keep the messaging consistent um, and repetitive so that over time uh, hopefully it gets ingrained in him uh, I do simple things where he has a, a weekly allowance um, that he has to put 40% into savings 10% uh, to charity uh, and then 50% that he's allowed to spend and towards specific goals to try to teach him that you can you have to save up for goals and for toys uh, so as much as possible we don't buy him toys outside of birthdays or uh, you know uh, events where a gift would be appropriate and if he asks for something we say he has to save up to try to impart in him the value of saving up and that it takes time and effort in order to be able to purchase something uh, and then hopefully you know, sometimes he won't buy something worth $5 because he realizes if he wants to buy something that's worth 15 he has to save his money to get that. Uh, we pay him interest on the money he saves to show him that money grows uh, so that he can realize if he doesn't spend it, it will become worth more later. Um, and then we just talk to him about the value of time and money. So to your point about you've heard me talk to him about that is sometimes when a toy is, you know, maybe $50, uh, I tell him how many hours I or mom have to work in order to have enough money to do that. Uh, and then that time at work time at work is time away from the family. And so when he says, oh, you're not at home, I say, well, you can't have it both ways. Um, so the, the way I, I try to teach him, I think you probably cut that out. So the way I try to teach him the value of the time is that it takes time and effort and work to earn money in order to buy things. So we don't pay for chores around the house because you're part of the house. Mom doesn't get paid to do the chores she does. I don't get paid to do the chores I do. But where I may pay somebody to help out, whether it's putting together IKEA furniture or you know landscaping, I offer to pay him to help me. Uh, and a funny story, a little while ago, uh, he asked me how much would I pay him, and I told him sixteen dollars an hour, because uh, that's about minimum wage. And he's like, that's not enough, because he realized that the toy he wants to buy that's $30, he has to work two hours to get it. And so I had to explain to him, well, if you don't do that work to get that $30, mom or dad have to. Um, so again, does he understand in the first messaging? I don't know, but the idea is to be repetitive and consistent with that kind of messaging that you need to work to earn money uh, and that uses your time and then that's what can buy things that he uses.